Hello, welcome to Tree Plotter. It's great to have you here. This is your orientation video where we'll cover everything you need to know to get started with Tree Plotter. We'll go through how to log in and then how to map and manage your trees, navigate around Tree Plotter, and finally take a short tour through the tools available to you. How to access Tree Plotter. Tree Plotter is browser based, which means you don't need to download or install anything. All you need is the link that's specific to your company and a device that has a browser. If you're using TreeBlotter from your phone, you still only need the link that's specific to your company and your login details. You may like to save it as an icon for speed of logging in next time. Everything essentially works the same, but you'll need to click on the menu button before you can click on login. Once you're in, you'll also need to click back onto the menu to bring up the options to add or move a tree or access the legend or data table. Let's log in. Whether from your computer or device, click on the login button in the top right corner and enter your username and password. Note that both are case sensitive. If you later or have already forgotten your password, click on the forgot password menu item and follow the instructions. When you're ready, click the login button. If you are an administrator of TreeBlotter, then you can create logins for your colleagues and anyone else who needs access to your TreeBlotter. I'll just show you this briefly before we get into the trees side of things. Click on the hub to access the menu, go to admin, account, manage account, and all users. Click on cancel if the add user form has tried to be helpful and popped your username in. Fill in the username, email address, password, enroll for the user, and click Save. Let's add a tree. In the upper right corner, you will find the buttons for Add and Move. Select the Add button, and now you are in Add mode. Next, it will give you the option to add a tree by map or by GPS. If you were in the field with the GPS unit linked to your device, you could use the GPS method. But in this case, we will use the by map method. Simply click the map to add the point. Then we'll work our way through the tree detail form, filling out any relevant information. The address, city, and the latitude and longitude coordinates are some of the fields that will be auto-populated. When you're finished, click Close. Now, let's say we didn't get the location exactly right the first time, or we had imported data from GPS and needed to adjust slightly. We can then move the point using the Move button. This will also update the location information of the tree, like the address. To move trees on a tablet or touchscreen, tap on the Move button, then tap the desired tree, and then tap the new location on the map. Make sure, if you want to click on an existing tree to open the details form, that you have exited Add or Move mode. While the Add or Move button is highlighted in blue, you will continue to add or move when clicking on the map. If for some reason you need to delete a point, open the tree details form and then simply click delete. If you'd like to retain the data of this tree point, but do not want the point to appear on your default map for you, you can archive the tree. This can be particularly useful in the case of a tree removal. By archiving the tree point, you free up this planting location on your map view, but don't lose any historical data. All data is edited in real time and will instantly be reflected in the legend charts and graphs and the data table. Let's add some more trees to the map. Click on the Add button, choose Map or GPS, and then click on the map. After adding a tree to the map, the details form will pop up. The details form is where data collection happens. This form is very customizable, but we will go over some of the basics in this video. First, let's assign the new tree point a species using the common name drop-down field. 
After clicking on the drop down field, a new window pops up that contains all of the species currently saved in your app. You can either scroll to find the correct common name or use the search bar at the top. Just start typing the name of the species and watch the list reduce to only the species that match your search. Select the correct species from the list. Notice that after selecting a common name, a few additional fields are populated. Family, genus and Latin name now have entries corresponding to the common name you picked. If you would prefer, you can select the Latin name and have the common name automatically populated. Let's browse to the Location tab. This tab contains a few fields that get auto-populated based on the location of the tree point. We use a Google service to pull the addresses through to TreePlotter, which includes the latitude and longitude as well as the address fields. To close the details form, either click the close button or click the cross in the corner. There is no save button as all data is immediately saved. See that we are still in ad mode. TreePlotter assumes we'll be plotting more than one tree at a time. There are no mandatory fields. Just fill in the fields you require. Let's say you were in an avenue or in a group of trees that were all very similar. To save time, you can pull through the details of the last tree. Here, I'll plot a sugar maple with a tree height of two that's in good condition. After plotting the next tree, before entering any details, click the load last button and say yes for it to pull through those details. Look, I now have another sugar maple that's too high and in good condition. You can then edit any of the fields for this tree to make the tree a bit shorter or taller or a bit narrower or wider and so on. To pull through the details from a specific tree, ensure that you're not still in add mode. Click on the tree point and then click on the add button. When you click load last now, it will pull through the information from that tree. To edit a tree, click the point and then from the pop-up, click the details button to get back to the details form. Attributes can be manually entered and existing values overwritten. If you are revisiting a tree after some time and need to record the fact that it's now a bit taller and a bit wider than when you last visited it, you might like to use the inspection tool. This allows you to maintain a history of when the tree was inspected and the previous values. Simply click the inspect button from the pop-up or the top of the tree form to open the inspection form. Either click on the attribute you wish to change and enter the value or click on open all. Had there been any previous values, they will be automatically displayed in the boxes, ready for you to update as needed. It defaults the day to today's date, but if you carried out the inspection yesterday, for example, then you could amend it. Enter any notes about the inspection and attach any photos. Finally, click Submit for the new record to be created. You can see the history of the tree in the History tab and the Inspection tab. Here you can see the progression and that this tree grew from having a diameter of 5 inches to 6. On the right side of your tree plotter application is the interactive legend. Using the legend, we are able to display trees based on a variety of different attributes. Typically, your app starts off with a basic handful of common fields to display by. For example, species, dbh and condition, with species being the default option. However, upon request, we can add fields to this list for you or change the default option. Once you have displayed by a certain attribute, below you can view the legend or key and a quick count of each value. You can also search for specific values in the search bar. You can quickly view or hide by toggling on or off particular items within the legend. Note that this is not a true filter, but just hides trees from the map and does not affect other parts of the map in the way the advanced filter does. 
The Symbology drop-down allows you to change the way you see the points on the map. Selecting DBH will change the relative size of the point based on the diameter of the tree. TPZ and the CRZ options show the tree protection zone and critical root zone by drawing a circle around the tree point. If you have used the advanced filter to save a filter, then you can see and apply your filters in the view filter dropdown. Here I have applied one that just shows trees with a DBH between 5 and 10 inches. If I change the display by to be by DBH, then it color codes the trees according to which DBH range they fall within. Showing X of Y sites, 297 of 5,885 sites here, means that you are viewing 297 trees that are visible in the map out of the 5,885 trees that are in your application, or in this case, meet the parameters of the applied filter. If I clear this filter, the legend then updates to reflect the entire tree inventory, as well as how many are visible within the current map extent. At the bottom of the legend is the chart section, which provides another way to see a relative percentage or count of each category. You can also view this in a bar chart format. You can also hide the legend if you like. When minimized, it will show in the bottom right corner and can be maximized again from there. Located on the left hand side of the screen is the navigation toolbar. At the top, you will find zoom buttons. The plus will zoom in and minus will zoom out of the map extent. Next is the home button. This will return you to the default map center point. The following find your location button allows you to find your current location based on the GPS of the device you are using. Below this is the where to globe icon, which is the address search function. Type in any address to zoom to that location. The search is a global filter, so to find the correct location, we recommend typing in the street or road name, and then depending on where you are in the world, adding in some additional information, such as the city and or state or council. You can also enter a city and zip code, or in the UK, a postcode. Next, we have the base map settings, which allow you to select which base map you would like to use. There are four default options. Clicking on the advanced option will open the map menu within the hub, where there are even more options to choose from. The advanced filter is a multi-purpose tool it allows you to search and locate a specific tree or a collection of trees that match certain criteria or attributes. It can also aid you in interrogating, analyzing and reporting on your data. It is located within the navigation toolbar on the upper left side of the screen. Click on the funnel icon and the advanced filter pop-up window will open. From here, we have a few different options on how to filter for trees with specific attributes. First, we can set a filter by map, which allows us to select certain trees based on their location. Click the tree map filter button, and now we have a blue circle on our cursor. Click once to start drawing a polygon around the area you would like to isolate, and click again to create a pivot point. When you're done, Join it up or double click to complete the polygon. Your inventory will now only show the trees within the area that we just drew. Note that the legend now only represents this subset of trees. I can modify the polygon by clicking and dragging the edges.
we can also toggle on and off the polygon visibility. To clear the filter, select the Clear GMAP Filter button. The other way to select certain trees is by applying a filter on certain attributes within your tree data fields. Let's say you want to find all of your live oak trees that are in good condition. Under the common name field, select live oak. I'm using the search box for ease. Also remember, you can change what the trees are displayed by. I'll just change it to condition. Now I want to filter using the condition field and select good. Now the filter parameters have been set, click apply. We've quickly seen that we have 31 live oaks with a good condition. To clear this filter, click the clear all filters button. Let's do another. This time I want to see all of the trees that are stumps. This information is held in the status field. I can't see it in the list, but you can filter on all tree fields. So if you don't see the field that you would like to search on, click on the add field drop down and select the desired field. This will now, at least temporarily, be added to the selected fields. You can tell TreePlotter to zoom so that all of the trees you've asked to see fit perfectly on the map. Click on Global Filter Settings and then tick the Bound to Map box. In this case, it will zoom me closer into the map as the stumps are all in this area. I can change the base map so that they are easier to see. Next to the legend, you will see a box with the current filters being applied. This box will turn yellow if a filter is currently applied on the map. If you click the arrow, you can see a summary of all the filters that you have engaged. This is a quick way to orient you as to what has been shown in the map. If you click the funnel, this is a shortcut to open the advanced filter. Now that I've cleared the filters, the box has gone back to white and says that there are no filters applied. It is also possible to use a combination of both the map filter and the fields option. As you can imagine, these filters can be as simple or as complex as you need them to be. It is important to know that the advanced filter will affect the map and interactive legend as we've seen, but also your stats, charts and graphs, data table, mass up data and exports. The data table is another way to view your tree plotter data. Instead of being a point on the map, you can see the information in a tabular format and see the attributes of many records at the same time. You can choose which fields you display here, change the order of the fields and data, and then export it to spreadsheet or other file types. This is one way to report on your data. Let's see it in action. Click on the data table in the top left hand side of the banner. It shows the different tables that store your data. If you click on one, it shows the records in a tabular format and you can view the data from here and even edit it if necessary. As you can see, the table opens with certain fields displaying that have been set up as the default view. Let's say you wanted to see different fields. You have the ability to add and or remove fields within the views tool. I'll click on the views button to toggle between seeing the records and accessing the views tool itself. For ease, you can toggle all the fields on or all the fields off, and you can choose exactly which fields you want to see by checking the box. Let's say I want to see the common name, the condition and the DBH. I'll check each of those boxes and leave the others unchecked. If I wanted one of those fields to be frozen and always remain on the far left of the table, I can check the box under frozen next to that field. When you finish selecting the desired field, click apply. Now only those columns will appear in the data table. If you want to change the order of the columns or the sorting, click back onto views to get the views tool once more. Here you can drag the columns around in a particular order 
and add up to four fields to enable the data itself to be sorted in either ascending or descending order. This is the Zoom To button. It will zoom in to show you where that tree is on the map. This button is the report button where you will get a detailed report of that tree, including any photos. You can save views so you don't have to set it up each time. This will save the fields you chose, the sort order and any filters that you had applied. By selecting save view, you can create a new view, in which case you can give it the name of your choice. Once saved, the view will appear in the drop-down box in My Views at the top of the tool. I'll select this previously saved view called Large, Poor or Dead Trees, and that will bring up the view that includes the common name DBH, which in this case shows the trees with a large diameter, and Condition, which in this case are all in a poor or dead condition. To export as a CSV or shapefile, with this view applied, press More and then Export. Notice that this list of trees is limited to just the large, poor or dead condition trees because of the filter. If you wanted to see every single tree, you would need to clear the filters first. There is more that you can do from the data table. Please see the tutorials on our website on the data table and also on mass updating for more information on this feature. Let's move on to the hub and see what tools are available to you. Navigate to the hub in the top left side of the banner. From here, select the map tools menu where you will find the following tools. Draw, labels, layers, map, measure and print. These tools will allow you to make temporary alterations or annotations to the map so that you can draw attention to certain areas. Starting with the draw tool, this feature allows you to place temporary overlays on the map, including points, lines and polygons. You can change the parameters such as color, size, width and opacity. Additionally, you can create custom labels which will appear on top of and in the center of your drawing. The label tool can be used to select a layer and field to label on the map. You can also change the parameters including color, size and or text weight. Labels can either be on or if there are a lot of labels, you might prefer them to only appear when you hover over a tree. The layer tool can be used to customize the appearance of any inventory layer present in your application. Start by selecting a layer from the menu. You can update the parameters, including color, size, and shape. Additionally, you can visualize and interact with the symbology features, such as DBH. We saw the map tool a bit earlier. This allows you to change the base map shown. Additionally, if you have custom imagery, you can toggle it on and off from here. The measure tool allows you to accurately determine length, location and area on the map. You can use the length option to measure the distance between a tree and a house or between a tree and the road, for example. The measurements can be in your choice of unit, i.e. imperial or metric. You have control over the color and size preference. There are buttons that appear after you start measuring to allow you to delete or modify them. An important note regarding these tools is that any changes or additions made from the map tools are not permanent and will be erased or reverted upon refreshing the map. That said, you can use the print tool to download a printable image file of the current map extent with the above features displayed. You can also use this tool to capture the entire extent of the map currently visible. So be sure to position the map and apply any filters before clicking print. It can also display features such as a title and scale bar and be saved to your choice of file type, PDF, JPEG, PNG. You can also choose to toggle on the legend or key to the color coding of the trees, which is determined by the display by in the legend and also toggle on the scale, mirrored from the map extent. 
Under the advanced options, you will find additional options, including adding a disclaimer and the option to arrange the location of the title, legend, scale and disclaimer. Let's have a look at some more tools that are available to you in the hub. Under data tools, Treeplotter offers ways to extract, transform and load data into and out of Treeplotter. These tools will vary in availability based on the user permissions in your Treeplotter account. The data field editor is available to administrator level users. The tool is used to edit the tree details or any inventory layer details form. You can use the tool to add or edit fields and their values, edit tabs and set some user permissions. The exporter is used to export out data from Treeplotter into a CSV, shapefile or DXF files. By clicking on advanced, you can export out raw photos or attachments. The inspections manager is used to customize the inspection form used in the trees or other inventory layers. The lookup table editor is used to add and delete values to tables such as species, work tasks or parks. These tables tend to change frequently and may have longer lists than others. You are welcome to add, edit and delete species from here as well as directly from the tree details form depending on your permissions. The map scenario section allows users to create a custom URL that can be shared with others to show them the map, the data filters or other tools within Treeplotter. The mass updater is used to update many trees at once or delete many trees at once. Before using this tool, we recommend always filtering down your data using the advanced filter before making large scale changes. The reference layer importer can be used to import shapefiles and CAD drawings into Treeplotter. The uploader tool is used to import new tree inventories into Treeplotter. The tool will create new points on the map and add them into your Treeplotter inventory. In addition to using the data table and the print tool to export data out of Treeplotter, there are more tools available to analyse your data. Do have a look around the stats menu at the by the numbers, the charts and graphs. This one is my favourite and the tree management insights. The reports is also well worth a look around to see which of these will be of interest to you. Any charts you have favorited will be pinned to the dashboard. Have questions or need some assistance? The Planet Geo software support team is ready to help. To contact us, click on the question mark in the white navigation toolbar on the left side of the screen. Clicking on the question mark will open up our contact details and a way to reach us directly in Treeplotter. You can fill out your email, the device, browser and software version you're using and write us a custom message. For customers in the UK and Europe, we recommend bypassing the form and writing an email to uksupport.planetgeo.com directly from your inbox. Please reach out to Planet Geo software support team if you have any questions regarding the software tools, your Treeplotter subscription, issues or potential defects within the software and requesting new features. For any pressing questions related to software functionality, the support button in the top left of the banner will take you to our software support site with many resources on how to use, leverage and expand the tools within Treeplotter. The search bar at the top of the page can be useful when trying to find information relating to how to use certain tools. For example, if looking for more information on the advanced filter, try searching filter and see the list of options that come up. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to book your next complimentary training with us. To schedule, refer back to the email you received when your application was delivered. If you have trouble finding it, 
reach out to support at planetgeo.com. If there are any questions, please reach out to our team. We are always happy to help.